Let's, um, let's maybe move on and we'll start sure. doing some patterns of good web security. All right. And really what I want to start looking at here is that the same sort of stuff I'd, I'd look at with most apps. And where I normally start is the OWASP top 10. So let's have a look at this document and we'll talk a bit about OWASP. Okay. Uh, so OWASP is the Open Web Application Security Project. And I just happen to have about three courses on this <laughs> website as well. Because there's a lot of information on it and it's a really, really good resource. And effectively, what OWASP does, uh, first of all, they're, uh, they're a not-for-profit organization. Okay. Uh, so they are there for the greater good of uh, security on the web, which is very, very nice. They're technology agnostic, which is also very yes. nice. So they apply what? equally to ASP.NET as to PHP, as to Node, as to anything that's angle brackets on the web. Yep. Uh, even things that are not angle brackets because they've got a whole bunch of stuff that covers you know, APIs and JSON. Uh, and right. sort of <laughs> Maybe we should just say HTTP. I was just about to say HTTP, actually. Yeah, it but then they might like do stuff on sockets. And no, stop worry. it. <laughs> so they, they do web stuff. <laughs> and they produce a, a publication called the Top 10 Most Critical Web Application Security Risks. Mm -hmm. And they release this every few years. They update it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's 2013, but that's the latest. So I'm that's guessing. 2013. And 2013 hasn't actually changed much from 2010 either. Okay. Um, so it's, yeah, whether you're looking at 2010, 2013, same sort of deal. Now, what we might do, we'll just jump down a few pages. We'll jump down to page six, and uh, we'll, we'll try and actually fit this guy into the browser a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they have these top ten risks, and we only need to sort of see maybe the top half a dozen here. But the thing they do here is, is they'll look at something like, say, injection. Injection is number one. So injection is number one, and, we're, you know, we normally talk about SQL injection. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. could be LDAP injection or other more obscure drop tables. Uh, yeah, Bobby Tables. Yeah, I should have won. I normally have the show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but something like injection is the number one risk because uh, of a number of factors. So discoverability is very easy. You can do mm -hmm. Google Doc searches that will give you results that you'll almost certainly find injection risks with. Google Doc. Um, the Google Doc. So, uh, for example, you could do a search, and I won't give the exact syntax because it may give away too much. Okay. <laughs> but you could do a search for classic ASP web pages with ID equals in the query string. Ah, right. And this comes back to the early discussion about the old stuff having yep. more vulnerabilities. Yep. You'd have a pretty good likelihood of finding SQL injection vulnerabilities. Uh, in fact, I've seen hackers do live streams of their attacks, and that's what they'll do. They'll look for live streams. ASPX. Yeah. Wow. So how those guys aren't locked up yet? I don't yeah, know. I was about to say. <laughs> so uh, maybe by the time this goes live, they will be. <laughs> uh, so they'll they'll look at these old classic technologies. Yep. So they're very very easy to find. They're very, very easy to exploit. Mm -hmm. And I know you've seen me do speaking events have, before I where have. I've got people on stage who've never hacked anything, and I've gone, okay, you're going to do SQL and injection they did. And they copy and paste URLs into a graphical user interface and just go, it's like hack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here's, here's all your internal things. Um, which, are, again, this is why you need strong password storage as well, mm -hmm. because it can be that easy to get to stuff get it out. out of the system. So that's not number three, ease of ex uh, number two, ease of mm. exploit. And number three is impact, because it is highly impactful. If you mm. have a SQL injection vulnerability, not only can you get data out, but you can get data in. So you could go through and say, look, I'm going to start to change things like um, values in a, in a CMS such that it injects malware into the page. Yeah, you nice. could do it, and you could probably do it silently as well, I'm guessing, so that you could have stuff in there that they wouldn't know about. Yeah, well, a lot of time they wouldn't until someone keeps saying, why do you keep giving me malware? <laughs> there are lots of precedents of legitimate sites uh, being attacked yeah. in this sort of way. And, of course, you could also just go and drop objects and things like well, that. Well, I'm just trying to get to the point that if you have SQL injection tech, it's not always that they're going to go, oh, drop the entire database or change everything. or It might be much more subtle so that they just inject, they find a, a piece of HTML that's in the database or something like that, and they yeah. change that to their benefit, and you'd never know. Yeah, and it, it really depends on motivations as well, right? Mm, so mm. if it was, say, uh, we often talk about three classes of a criminal. So we, we talk about hacktivists, and they're often kids, and they've got not a lot of skills, but they've got a whole lot of time and yeah. ingenuity. Career criminals that are in there to make money, and this, you know, this is a lifestyle for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the government, which is quite a lot harder <laughs> to protect against. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you've got $40 billion a year worth of budget, things get tricky. But, uh, you know, on that spectrum, kids want to go in and muck stuff up. Uh, hacktivists yeah. want to go in and drop tables and destroy things and put skulls and crossbones and See, I did that, yay! And yeah, and, and they'll, yeah. they'll whack it on paste bin and claim it. Mm. Um, career criminals are in there to try and monetize it. Yep. So they're going to want to get malware onto the pages, they're going to want to harvest credentials and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But uh, we will actually talk about injection in, in okay. detail in just a moment. All I do about IWAS Top 10 
is that it's a great resource for sort of going through and systematically looking at these risks in order of priority. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, number one, injection. Number two, broken authentication session management. And we're going to go through these over the next half hour or so and, right. and see what we find.